Brighter Shores, a new MMORPG being developed by Andrew Gower and his team at Finn Research. Andrew is the co-founder of Jagex and the mind behind RuneScape. So we know that these two games will have a similar style and a similar feel, but what exactly are the differences and what can we expect from Brighter Shores? That is exactly what we are going to explore in today's video. While playing Brighter Shores and after progressing through the storyline a bit, you will eventually come to a point where you have to make a decision about what type of class you want your character to become. There are three different types of classes, and my impression is that all three of them will be able to utilize melee and ranged weaponry, but the main difference between them being the type of magic that they can use. So the Cryo Knight will have access to ice magic, the Guardian will have access to nature magic, and the Hammer Mage will have access to some kind of storm magic. What's really nice is that each account will actually have three character slots. So if you'd like, you could have each character represent each class, and then you can easily switch between them. Now, when it comes to monetization, they've stated that it's not a big priority for them, and they're more focused on creating an enjoyable game that can bring in as many players as possible. They don't have to worry about investors or publishers, and they've stated that other games have become way too microtransaction heavy, and they want to be more straightforward about their monetization plan. With that said, their premium pass system will function similar to that of old school RuneScape, with the main difference being that they're probably not going to be introducing any auto recurring subscriptions. So it seems to me that basically you'll buy the premium pass, which will give you access to all of the content that exists so far. And once that premium pass expires, you'll have to make the conscious decision to purchase another one. And honestly, these monetization decisions should come as a breath of fresh air to players because we don't usually see this kind of position from game developers and honestly they're in a unique place to have this kind of perspective when it comes to monetization. So as long as the premium pass isn't exorbitantly priced, I don't really see anyone having any complaints about it. Free to play players will have access to Hope Port and Hope Forest, and premium pass holders will additionally have access to the Mine of Mantuban, Chronopolis, a unique character name, exclusive armor dies, the ability to change your name, and player to player trading. So free to play players will not have access to player to player trading, and I believe this was a decision that was made to help prevent botting, which I will talk a little bit about more later. It also says that there will be more professions for players who have a premium pass. So what are professions? Professions are to brighter shores what skills are to RuneScape. Let's take a look at some of these professions. So we have Fisher. First, can we talk about how awesome this like kind of spear fishing looks? I'm so excited to try fishing in brighter shores. Anyway, we have Fisher, Forager, Chef, Woodcutter, Miner, Alchemist, Stonemason, Merchant, which I'm also very curious about, and Blacksmith, and many more. I'm guessing this many more is going to be those professions that are locked behind the premium pass. Maybe the archaeology or paleontology professions that we saw in the trailer. It would make sense to me that those that, that one might be unlocked in the mine or Anopolis, maybe? I think we can get a pretty good idea how most of these will work just from their names and their pictures. The ones that are similar to skills in RuneScape, it looks like there's still going to be a lot of new and interesting mechanics involved, so I don't think any of them are going to feel exactly the same. And professions are also going to have an offline progression system, I would guess at reduced rates of finding items and gaining experience. But this should make it so players who are really busy from day to day in their personal lives can still make some progress in the game. And it'll also allow everyone to focus their attention on the professions that they actually enjoy, and then they can take a more passive approach to the ones that they don't. Another interesting mechanic when it comes to professions is that the most efficient training method is always changing. What this means is that you can go cut a thousand of the same tree all day long if you really want to, but it's unlikely that that will be the best way to train woodcutting. The game will try to n kind of nudge you in a direction of trying a variety of different things like Maybe you should try a different aspect of this same profession, or maybe you should go try another profession altogether. And I think this is a really good change, both to break up the monotony of doing the same thing over and over again, and also for the economy. You know, you won't have items where the supply is just so big just because it's related to a really efficient training method. Another big difference is that Brighter Shores will be room-based instead of having an open-world map. Basically, you'll be in a room that may have a few different exits, 
and you'll have to make the decision about which path you want to take. This is probably the most controversial design decision, with some people saying the rooms feel too small or too restricting, but this system also comes with several advantages. You'll be able to streamline the new player experience by slowly introducing new game mechanics so that new players don't ever feel too overwhelmed at any one point, which can be a big problem when it comes to MMOs. This kind of system also gives them a lot of control over the storyline of the game, which I believe is a big part of the reason that future expansions will be releasing in an episodic format. It should be interesting to see what kind of quests and stories they're able to create with a system like this. The rooms will also allow them to create instances of each location, ensuring that rooms are never too crowded. Resources and monsters should never have so much competition that it becomes frustrating. RuneScape functions on a tick-based system. A tick is basically a game cycle, a unit in time in which all server-side events are executed. For example, if you click to attack a monster, then you will attack at the start of the next tick. There are approximately 100 ticks in a minute. This means all of your actions will be delayed by up to 0.6 seconds. The tick-based system does add a sense of strategy, especially when it comes to PvP. However, Brighter Shores won't be using this system, and will instead have real-time responses as most modern MMOs do, and I think most people will be happy about that. If you've played RuneScape before, you probably know that it has had a huge problem with botting and a long history of waging war against these bots, which has been largely unsuccessful. Bots have had a very negative impact on the economy of RuneScape and also on player experience as a whole. Some of the features of Brighter Shores that we've discussed in this video seem like they were created with the intention to deter botting, or at the very least to help reduce the effect of botting on the economy, and improve player experience when there are bots. A potentially changing meta for skilling, a room-based system so you're not competing with a ton of bots for different resources, blocking trading behind the premium pass so people can't make a ton of free accounts and start botting on them, and passive offline skilling. Why would you bot when you can just log out and your character will continue skilling? Well, I guess that will depend on how powerful the offline passive skilling is, but you can kind of see the thought behind it. With all of that said, and with all the similarities and all the differences, it's important to remember that this game isn't RuneScape, and Andrew himself stated that they weren't looking at any other game when creating Brighter Shores. In fact, they've tried to do things that have never been done before. I'm sure there are and will be many more differences than I could possibly outline in this video. But that's all for now. If you guys are interested in playing Brighter Shores in the future, be sure to subscribe. I plan to make more videos, and I hope to see some of you in-game. If you have any questions or you want me to clarify on anything in this video, then please leave a comment. I'd love to get a conversation going. And if you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, leave a like. Uh...